boyfriend likes my girlfriend and I cry in vain. Please help me in my agony. Dear Jane, dear Jane, dear Jane, agony. Dear Marion, well, I suppose that's two more words than yesterday. Come on, Jane, what is the problem? You've been staring out of the window for the better part of a week now. If you're going to jump, jump. But could you dictate to me on the way down? You're so far behind, your letters are getting letters. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Oh, him. What did your husband do to you this time? Don't tell me. He's having an affair. How did you know that? I saw it on Police 5. <laughs> So the sex therapist didn't work, huh? How did you know that? I read it in Nursery World. Listen, did you see Blue Peter last night? No. Ah, uh ha, -huh. ha. Well, what you wouldn't know is that the sex therapist told us that all our problems would be solved if we didn't make love for two weeks. Ingenious. And uh, did you hold out? Yes, we did. I did. I mean, I didn't, but he did. And not with me either. How do you know? <sighs> well, one night he told me he was working late at the office. So? Lawrence hasn't got an office. <laughs> How clumsy. Oh, listen, it's not the affair I mind so much. God knows he needs the exercise. It's just... <laughs> I think this time I may really lose him. So, Lawrence has got another woman. <gasps> I knew it. I knew it. Who is she? Who is she? I'll kill her. I'll kill her. Oh, just, just some water. water. Oh, Jane. Jane, I knew there was something wrong. I knew the minute I woke up this morning I had a lump here. Mother, please. Oh, Jane. Jane, you look terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> Why haven't you been returning my phone calls, darling? I was so desperate, I almost wrote you a letter. <laughs> now, listen, I'm going to sit here and you must tell Mummy everything that that rotten husband of yours did to you. And don't spare any details. I'm strong. I can take it. <laughs> Lawrence is just having an affair. Oh, I don't want to hear him. <laughs> please, the water. He's, he's having an affair. Yeah, yeah, he's having an affair. And please don't say who's doing the catering. <laughs> now, remember, you're made of good Jewish stock. Like this chicken soup. Drink some. <laughs> Mother, at last it can be told. I ate your rotten chicken soup. Don't be ridiculous. I'm your mother. Oh. Drink. <laughs> and remember what your grandma Zelma used to say. You mean, has anybody seen my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> to a wedding walk, to a divorce, run. But I don't want a divorce, Ma. I want Lawrence. In God's name, why? Yes, why? Yes, why? <laughs> I do hope I'm not intruding. Diana. Yes, Jane, darling. Remember me, I'm your editor. Uh, how are you? Uh, don't bother to answer, I can see. Would you like some chicken soup? I'm <laughs> touching, no, thank you. Now, I came to tell you that unless you get off your ass and do some work the day before yesterday, I shall have your toenails for a necklace. Well, it's made from a Jewish chicken. You haven't dealt with the problem since Monday. And your last column raised more questions than it answered. So I wanted to snap out of it and start producing. And now I must dash. Ah, uh, so nice. Good show. But <laughs> Nice frock she was wearing. Very cheerful. Our editor has great taste in clothes. Oh, and so colourful. I always think you get a better deal that way. I mean, why buy a solid when you can get all those extra colours for nothing? <laughs> Here, darling, eat. Oh, please, God, let Lawrence pay me more attention and everybody else leave me alone. Jane, hmm? if you mention your husband once more, I swear I'll never speak to you again. Really? Mm. My husband. My husband, Lawrence. Lawrence, the name of my husband is. Is... Hello, darling. Talk of the devil. Have you got a minute? Oh, I've got thousands. Hello. Hello, Ma. <laughs> Somebody should give you a smack in the face. <laughs> I'd do it myself if I could reach. <laughs> 
Are you talking to me, Val? Sure. Drop dead. <laughs> what it is to be loved. <laughs> Lovely day, Jane. What's her name? Who? Ooh. You know it still hurts that you're lying to me. What's her name? Uh, uh, Jane, Jane, I might have lied to you. I might have cheated on you. I might have been unfaithful to you behind your back. But, Jane, I haven't taken these steps lightly. No, you've taken them in hobnailed boots. What's her name? <laughs> her name is Faith. Next week, hope and charity? <laughs> Jane, this menage our faith could enrich our marriage, Jane. Monogamy has become monotonous to us. And I love you too much to stifle you in a conventional marriage. Oh, you mean you're, you're having this affair for my sake? Oh, Jane, you are more than a wife to me, darling. You are a friend. That is why I don't want to lie to you anymore. I want you to meet her. Meet her? Can I choose the weapons? <laughs> she has changed my life, Jane. No. As I know she no. can change yours. No! You know, Jane. She's a no! Friend. I'm Faith Fuchs Wheeler. How do you do? Larry has told me so much about you. Really? Lawrence has hardly breathed a word about you. Oh. Well, I'm tall, elegant, warm, attractive, extrovert, single, and principally interested in married men over five foot ten with small bottoms. <laughs> yes, Faith has a wonderful sense of humour. Oh, Jane, I can see you're flaring at the nostrils. <laughs> you disapprove of me. I understand. It must be very difficult for a woman of your, how shall we say, lack of experience on the course. Now, I always say that honesty is the best policy when deception doesn't work. <laughs> oh, there you are, scream. <laughs> Isn't she a scream, Jane? Yes, blood curdling. <laughs> two are going to get along, mm -hmm. and then the three of us can have a, a modern, a progressive relationship. What exactly do you want from me, Lawrence? Good question, Jane. Very direct and to the point. Jolly good, Jane. Jolly good. So I can put it in two words, Jane. Open marriage. What do you think? In two words? Up yours. <laughs> Jane, Faith says that an extramarital affair can make a good marriage even better. Yes. <laughs> I did say that. Very well put. You see, Jane, all I want from you is a simple agreement. I want Larry on Mondays and Thursdays, and you can have him for the rest of the week. Now, I think that's jolly fair. I mean, it's only 20%. Only 20%? Are you sure you don't need 30% with him? No, 20%'s fine. I don't want you to think I'm champing at the bit. <laughs> so, to the lady in the cashmere suit and no knickers. <laughs> If we were natives of northeastern Borneo, we'd have this fertility dance every Wednesday afternoon. We'd just do our own thing, you know, covered in mud, out in the open. Mm. Well, of course, that's the key word for today, isn't it? Mud. <laughs> open. <laughs> open. <laughs> After all, sex is only nature's way of saying, hello. And this is only my way of saying goodbye. So what have you decided? I have decided to go back to work. But Jane, you can't walk out in the middle of this discussion. Why not? You walked out in the middle of a marriage. Good luck. Take him and good luck. Oh, thanks awfully. Understand his orders. <laughs> Just remember one thing. Apart from his obvious charms, he has an appalling memory, rotten dandruff, an athlete's foot. Now, now Jane, you don't need to get close Jane. He never picks up his clothes, he sulks for days, and he sings 50s band tunes in his sleep. Now, I know all those things about him, and I still love him. Could you? <laughs> you need a jolly good whipping. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry, Laurie. Will you be home for dinner tonight? Um, yeah, well, it is, it is Thursday, Jane. <laughs> I suppose I could split my night 50-50. Would that be the best bet? Odds on favourite, old sport. <laughs> You're back. That's uh, wonderful. Yes. Fighting fit and fighting back. Now, sharpen your wits and sharpen your pencils. First letter. 
Dear Jane, please forgive me for bothering you, but my problem is that I continually apologise. Silly, aren't I? It's been getting on my husband's nerves lately, well, for the last ten years. What can I do? I'm truly, truly sorry. I'm sorry. I do apologise. I don't know how to stop. Regretfully <laughs> yours, Dolores. OK, right. Dear Dolores, I'm awfully sorry to say, but I think I can help you. If you... In uh, sorry to disturb you, uh, Jane. But the editor asked if you could have a look at these first. Oh, oh. sorry. OK, I'll do that. Uh, sorry, Val, I'll be back in a moment. And, uh, and while I'm here, could I please talk to you for a minute? Absolutely. Bye now. But don't forget, I'm just outside. <laughs> Would you like to uh, sit down and tell me all about it? Uh, well... I, have, I haven't got a girlfriend. Well, you haven't got one now or you've never had one? Well, I'm not very good at talking to girls. I, I just don't know how to. How old are you? I'm 16. Oh, I go to discos and things, but they're so noisy and, and everyone's in couples and I just don't know where to begin with a girl. I can't talk to them. Well, you don't seem to have any trouble talking to me. Oh, but you're different. I mean, older and... Careful. Oh, uh, Mrs. Lucas. I mean, Jane, I didn't mean that... I just meant, well, older than me. Yes, and that makes a difference, does it? Well, yes. I mean, I think so. You seem so much more... Well, so much less... Well, I just don't feel I'm very handsome or anything. and I don't know where to start. Look, my secretary just gave you the glad eye, and although she's not quite as geriatric as I am, she knows a good thing when she sees it. <laughs> such a big deal out of this. Just do it. How do you mean? Do the simple thing. Look, ask the next girl you like to have a coffee or a drink with you, anything. But do it while you think of it, instead of planning or preparing or wondering about what you look like or what you sound like. Even if you get turned down. Would you try and do that for me? All right. I'll try. Um, thanks for your, your time and, and everything. I'll try. I really will try. Thank you. <coughs> oh, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, uh, sorry. What a sweet young thing. Starstruck, isn't he, Jane? Try to get on with that lady to your Yes. Mrs. Lucas, Jane, would you like a coffee or a drink or anything? Oh. <laughs> Just in half an hour, it will be my lunchtime, and I will be free if you would like to. And will you? Please? I'd love to. Will you come and collect me when you're ready? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, David, <laughs> thank you. And thank you. <laughs> what a pity. I was going to have him for lunch myself. <laughs> and they say blondes have more fun. The weather. If you want to know what the weather's like, look outside the window. It's still persisting down. <laughs> I'm with the show. And let's hear from Celeste next. Hello, Celeste. I have a compulsion. Oh, how can I help you? Just keep still and listen to my aura. Are you a Scientologist? No, that's not the path I process. I am a follower of the good, just, immaculate and humble, the one and only true avatar, the Reverend Moon Dog Renamuk. Oh, God. <laughs> Hey, listen, have you phoned in to save us, Celeste? And all your listeners, any earthly problem can be solved simply by sending just three ninety-five plus VAT for the Master's latest LP. Uh, Celeste, I'd just like to point out that in today's financial times, the Reverend Moondog Runamuck shares are down 37 pence. However, his armament sales are doing very well, so he's not as armless as he looks. <laughs> my bank bag. 
balance. Sorry. Listen, there's a lot of people about who can't think for themselves and they latch onto other people to think for them. Now, I don't want to sound harsh, Celeste, but as far as I'm concerned, your cult leads nowhere except possibly to a cyanide punch. I'll second that. I mean, following the flock is all very well, but leaping with the lemmings just ain't my kind of rock climbing. Celeste, it's been a pressure, but as I'm sure you're aware, the moon's in Uranus and it's time for a commercial. Thanks for the moral support. I prefer to think of it as immoral support. Listen, how about thanking me properly over a, a late supper and an early breakfast? I'd love to wine and dine you. Well, the dining's okay, it's the whining I can't stand. I only whine if I can't get my way. Okay. You get your way. Oh, I don't like to beg, but pretty please, can I come over tonight? All right, you can. Look, Jane, if you don't see me... <laughs> what did you say? I said, come over tonight. I may just do that thing. Don't threaten, Andy. Do it. <sighs> Happen in Radio 242, and our intimate art continues with the lovely and amenable Miss Jane Lucas. Okay, let's hear from Donald, who claims to be monosexual. I prefer stereo myself, but let's speak. Hello, darling. <laughs> Lawrence, what are you doing with that egg on your hair? I read somewhere it stimulates the follicles, Jane. <laughs> darling, I don't think you're supposed to cook it first. <laughs> Oh, I'd better go and uh, take it off or it doesn't do damage. I mean, I always knew you were an egomaniac, but really... <laughs> What's it supposed to do? Jane, I'm not getting any younger. I don't want to end up old and shriveled. Well, at this rate, you're going to end up young and shriveled. Now, uh, look, Jane, could we have a little chat? I, uh, I don't have much time. Oh, it's jolly good of you to fit me in. I don't look, Jane. <laughs> we are two adult, mature people, are we not? Well, we're old enough to be. And we should be able to be reasonable one with the other, should we not? Are you asking me for my permission for you to go on seeing Faith? I knew you'd understand. Save your breath. You mean the answer's no? I mean the answer's yes. I'm not serious. You want an open marriage? Yes. You got one. I accept. There's just one thing. Yes? Now, I wanted to do the job properly, so I've read the book on open marriage, and I have revamped our marriage contract accordingly. Yes. Now, I'd just like you to peruse it, if you would, right. egghead. <laughs> um, I, Lawrence Lucas, hereby take Jane Lucas to be my lawfully wedded wife on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. <laughs> Jane, 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 what, what is this, Jane? <laughs> Hold when available? Yes. Jane. Chapter one. The door to open marriage swings both ways, Lawrence. Now read on. As the home is a mutually held property, the maintenance thereof shall be mutual also. I, Lawrence Lucas, undersigned, will share, therefore, the cooking, the washing, the cleaning, and the ironing. Jane, look, I'm going to be exhausted with you and with Faith and commuting to Belgravia. Jane, you're much better at these things than I am. Well, of course I am, dear. I get more practice. No, no look here. Be reasonable, Jane. There are certain things a man must learn to expect. Lawrence! It was you who wanted to free me from the concept of a stifling marriage. Now, now I know about open marriage, I find I rather like it. OK? So, if you would read all those three copies and follow Jane, me Jane, and Jane, just Jane. sign them. Yes, but Jane, I had no idea you were going to be quite so, so enthusiastic about oh, it, Jane. Oh, I am. I can't wait to be reborn. Oh. Ooh, I wonder if that's a man. <laughs> of course, it's the gay mafia. <laughs> Tell me, Lawrence. What can we do for you on this fine evening? Invite us in. We've jogged all the way over from next door, Jane. Ah, oh, Look, Lawrence, it's the perfect couple. Yes, the perfect couple of what? <laughs> <laughs> Have to excuse Lawrence, he's himself tonight. Oh, that is too bad. Look, I'll come clean, Jane. We're selling tickets for the gay teacher's disco. You're coming, aren't you, Lawrence? What is it, a coming out ball? <laughs> yeah, raising money for the gay news appeal. For yes, Strasbourg. I'll buy ten. Oh, that's oh, great. Oh, Jane, you're a... Soft touch, Jane. No, darling, I'm not anymore. Only on Mondays and Fridays. Read the document. And then sign it, and the two boys can be witnesses. Witnesses for what? You're making out a will, Lawrence. I'm very sensible at your age. Yeah, Lawrence <laughs> wants an open marriage. I have agreed to it, and we're just about to make it legal. Oh, look, wait, Jane. Don't rush into this. Well, don't be so pious, Michael. I know all about you gay boys. Well, yes, of course. You went to public school, didn't you, Lawrence? <laughs> <laughs> look, I might be straight, Robert, but I'm not square. I've done a lot of research into your types. Add it like rabbits till you drop from sheer exhaustion. Well, where does all this happen? Do you have the address? <laughs> I suppose I should make allowances for your appalling ignorance, Lawrence. After all, we're gay and you're only a psychiatrist. But Rob and I agreed to be faithful. We did try an open relationship once, but it didn't work. Michael got too jealous. No, I didn't, Rob. I trusted you. 
just didn't trust the other guys. Oh, Michael, you can be so paranoid. Was it paranoid not to know whose underpants were in the wash? <laughs> and remember, we both agreed it was a disaster. Oh, I don't know. Sleeping around woke me up to a lot of things. Oh, like that time in Amsterdam. We agreed to go Dutch. Yeah, but you went berserk. <laughs> you couldn't get your clogs off quick enough. <laughs> you left me sitting in a leather tulip with a roll mop herring and a pint of lager, <laughs> while you did a disappearing act with Hans, Snills and Bumps a day. <laughs> Come through all that again, are no, we? not. Where are you going? I'm going to see someone who is not getting on my nerves. Good night. What did I say? Oh! Uh, there you see, Jane, what being faithful to one person does for two people. <sighs> hmm. We had rather a nice time in Amsterdam, do you remember? Mm. Oh, oh, look at the time. I'm going to be late. For what, dare I ask? I, I have an appointment with Faith. You and Billy Graham? <laughs> you'll, uh, you'll be all right, will you? Oh, I will be more than all right, lover boy. I'm going to have a busy time myself tonight. What? Darling, if you can see other women, I can see other men. In fact, I had lunch today with a perfect charmer. His name was David. He was sweet. Yeah, but Jane, Jane, I didn't think you'd actually want to see another man. Well, I may not see much of him. It depends whether the lights are on or off. But you're Jane, Jane. Oh, Lawrence. Now you've got egg on your face. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what's that? <laughs> the evening has arrived. Man? Well, for all practical purposes, and there's only one practical purpose I want him for. Listen, as it's Tuesday night, it's my night for the bedroom. Could you make yourself scarce? No, 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 no. Oh. Jane, Jane, let's, let's reconsider, eh? What? No, not at all. Ooh. Hello, Jane, baby. This is the wolf at your door. <laughs> I cannot tell you how long you've waited for this evening. Oh, and D, you could not have picked a better moment. Mm -hmm. How are you, Andy? Mm -hmm. I mean, how are you, really? Well, I haven't had any complaints so far. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the most incredible thing has happened. Mm -hmm. Lawrence has agreed to an open marriage, so I'm uh, free. That psychiatrist should have his head examined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there's only one question, really. Um, your place or mine? Mine. Oh, why not? I've got to do something and do it quickly if I'm to catch up with you. Hello, Lawrence. Goodbye, Andy. Oh, you're going somewhere. No, I was rather hoping you were. Oh, come on, let's go back to your oh, place. Well, actually, Jane, my, my waterbed sprung a leak. There's, there's water everywhere. Are you trying to uh, wet my appetite? <laughs> well, can't we make this some other evening? When? Oh, whenever. Hmm? Whatever. Oh, come on. I mean, this is just silly, isn't it? Why don't we behave like civilised people? After all, we're all friends. Why don't we uh, go into the bedroom together? What? What could be friendlier than that? Jane, look here. Look at yourself, Jane. Jane, Jane, Jane you're not free of us, Jane. Oh, sorry, darling. Did you want to fall? Uh, no, no, look, look. <laughs> I cannot perform with an audience. OK. Just, uh, just three, then. Uh, uh, no, look, Jane, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm... I'm getting premature withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello, Jane. This is Faith Fultzwiller. Has Lawrence left to meet me yet? Um, I'll just go and see Faith. Actually, I think he's in the kitchen setting fire to his leg. <laughs> Casanova, Faith's on the bed. I mean, on the phone. Oh, I'm not here. No, 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 no. You tell her. No, I can't. Jane, tell I'm unwell, anything. Oh, he says he's unwell. He also says he's not at home. But he's half an hour late. Uh, he's standing me up. Oh, I'll ask him, love. Are you standing Faith up? Hey? <laughs> what? I'm, Listen, I'm you open the marriage. Lawrence, you here right now. Lawrence, Thursday, and Thursday comes up once a week. Yes. You're being jolly unfair. Hello? Hello, Jane. Lawrence? Anyone, are you there? You should be here right now. Oh, Lawrence, do come to the phone and let's work this out. Lawrence, I'm losing my patience. Why doesn't anyone take me seriously? Why doesn't anyone just take me, damn it? I've always loved the food and now I'm 16 stone. I'm very, very small around the chest. My husband's all a black, it's driving me insane. Please help me in my company. Teaching, 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 
Thank you.